Okay, now that we've finished with our outfield, we'll go into our infield drills that we can go to, okay? As far as ready position goes, they're kind of similar to the outfield, um, except that an infielder has to be always on the balls of his feet, always, okay? He, when he comes set, he can do the same thing, take his step in, but he has to be on the balls of his feet so he can go left or right, okay? Obviously, the ball, especially if you're a middle infielder, you're going to handle 80 to 85% of the plays in baseball. So you have to be always ready, okay? In between pitches, okay, you want to make sure that you're moving your feet and you're always going because you don't want your spikes to get just stuck in there, especially when you have bad uh, weather conditions with rain, mud, a wet field, you know, wet grass. So if you play on turf, turf could be wet as well, okay? One of the drills that we work on that I, that I teach my players and uh, some of the places that I've coached, I've also uh, uh, taught them this drill, is basically a presentation drill. You can take the foul line, right, of your field, whatever field that you practice on, you don't have to necessarily have cones now, okay? You can use your line. Basically what you're doing is practicing coming around and working towards the ball in a direction towards first base, okay? For me, I'm left-handed, okay? So I would play first base, so most of my work would also be to the right. Because if I'm a first baseman, as I present, I'm always probably gonna go to the right for a double play kind of throw. For, so assume, assume that me being left-handed is not the problem. I'm gonna be a first baseman here, but when you're doing the drill as an infielder and you play third, second, or short, okay, you wanna work towards first base. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate how uh, we, we approach the ball and present properly to a baseball. As you can see, I have four cones, okay, and we'll start from the last cone, all right, and as I said before, I am left-handed, so I will work towards second base as a first baseman would, would do, okay. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we run up and then hop, take our presentation hop, okay, we call it a presentation hop where we come through, stay in front, okay? You should feel, when you present yourself to the ball, okay? You should feel your legs come down and sit and reach out in front, okay? As you can see, I'm presenting my wrists to the ball, okay? We don't wanna, we don't wanna curve our wrists up. We don't wanna do this, because then the tips of our glove are not presented to the ball. They will curve up, you can still miss the baseball, okay? When we get here, we'll field, come up to our chest, come out to our throwing side, all right, and we can make a throw, okay? Once we did that, then we'll come to the next cone, and we'll do the same thing. Run up, presentation hop, field, come up, and throw, okay? We'll come back again, and then do it again. Presentation hop, through, and then throw, okay? Okay, this is uh, one of our team drills that uh, I'm going to show you now, and this hel helps with the exchange of your hand from glove to hand, okay? More so, this is more so for infielders than outfielders, okay? So this is an infield drill. As you can see, I have four cones that are out here in a box, okay? Usually when you're on the field, you can go from the infield grass to the outfield grass, okay? Which is probably about 20 feet, okay? So you wanna make a box probably about 20 feet by 20, 20 by 20, and then, okay, you would want each person, it should be five guys minimum in order for this drill to be successful, okay? I'll start from this cone here, all right? And basically what you would do is you would have the same drill going around. It's called the catch and follow. I call it the catch and follow. So basically what you would do is the person who's standing at this cone would throw me the ball. When he would throw me the ball, I would catch it and I would throw it to the next guy and I would follow. And then I would wait here and receive the throw again, and then follow, and then follow, okay? This will help you, one, one, help with the exchange and the follow. When you throw in the baseball, okay, as coaches, we teach our players to walk through our throw. What we mean by that is when we throw a baseball, okay, and we throw, we walk through it in order to make sure that we have good carry and we stay accurate as possible. Okay, now you can do this drill with four different ways. You know, you can, with your infielders, you can have just a straight transfer, just a straight catch. 
catch, transfer, catch, transfer, and follow. You can also go in reverse with flips. So if I'm doing double plays, okay, I can act like I'm catching the ball and flipping out, okay? This would be usually second baseman who flipped the ball like this, okay? Also, okay, you can also go and do drops. So you'll catch, drop your knee, and throw. You can do that as well. These cones here just represent bases. That's all. And it also would help with conditioning, okay? It also helps with team camaraderie. You know, when you make it a competition drill where you have two or three boxes set up and you just have them go against each other. Competition is very important when you're coaching a team or when you're teaching your players. You want them to compete against each other because they, when they push against each other, they become better players. So the drills like this would definitely help. If you have that, when we were talking about outfield drills earlier, those break drills, you can throw those balls after them. You don't have to necessarily hit it to them. They can do their breaks, throw them a fly ball, make sure that they're, they're um, catching the ball properly, going through their progression as far as the crow hop, the release, and the follow through, okay? Once again, follow, catch and follows one, two is a quick, a quick feet drill, okay? Where you have a coach standing in front of you, okay? And you have a teammate that's behind you on each side of the cone and two in front, okay? What you would do is you would number them, one, two, three, four, okay? And your coach would shout out numbers just to work on your footwork. So, for example, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. If coach said three, three, one, two, four, okay? That's how it would work, okay? Where you're going and you're ready to receive the ball every time, working on your footwork. Once again, ready? One, three, two, four, okay? When you're ready for the ball and you're running around, okay? At that point, once you finish your four, you can receive the ball and give it back, okay? Now you start playing catch back on your flips. So if I said one, I would receive the ball, flip it back. Two, flip it back. Three, flip it back. Catch, flip it back. Catch, flip it back, all right? That'll work on footwork and exchanging. That's what we want to work on. Hopefully this will help you. Thanks.